To start the game, each player selects a CEO business card as their identity and gets a score pad to keep track of banked assets and liabilities in their offshore account. 150 million wins the game, and if you collect three indictments, it's three strikes and you're out. To begin play, the deck is shuffled and six cards are dealt to each player. The remaining cards are placed face down in a draw pile. Played cards are discarded into a discard pile, which can be shuffled and reused when the draw pile gets low. Play begins with the player to the left of the dealer and proceeds clockwise. At the end of each turn, players draw back to six cards. There are four types of cards in Fraud. Asset cards, which are green, liability cards, which are red, fraud cards, which are orange and act as attack cards, and blue defense cards, which fend off attacks. In any given turn, a player has one of five options. Bank a green asset card in your offshore account, securitize red liability cards, and if successful, bank those as assets in your account on the following turn, attack another player with an orange fraud card, and if successful, bank one asset card from your opponent while your opponent gets one indictment. Attacks are defended with defense cards. Number four, discard an unwanted card and draw back to six. This doesn't happen very often. Five, audit another player. Each player can do this only once per game. Option one, banking an asset card. With this hand, I've got a $25 million asset and want to bank it in my offshore account so that I can get to $150 million before my opponent. I take this card and literally place it in my offshore account here, write down $25 million in assets, and I draw back to six cards. That's my turn. On my last turn, I banked $25 million, the government bailout card, in my offshore account. And let's say next hand, I want to bank another asset card, $20 million stolen trade secrets. I just add it to my offshore account. Now I have $45 million on my way to $150 and winning the game. Pretty simple. Play option two, securitizing. If you have no assets in your hand to bank, and no fraud cards to attack with, but you have one or more liability cards, you may want to securitize and try turning those liabilities into assets. After all, why should investment bankers be the only ones who can turn junk securities into serious bling? You can too if you securitize successfully. To securitize, place one or more liability cards from your hand face up on the table and announce you're securitizing. The player must successfully defend against all attacks until their next turn and can then bank the liabilities as assets in their offshore account before drawing back to six cards. So in this case, 40 million in liabilities becomes 40 million in assets in my offshore account if I'm not attacked or if I can defend against attacks before my next turn. Let's say that I was able to bank those liabilities as assets because no one attacked me. I simply add them to my asset total in my offshore account, 40 million in liabilities, and they become 40 million in assets, and now I'm at 85 million. A good time to play liability cards and securitize is when you have a defense card or two in your hand to fend off attacks. Option three, playing a fraud card. If I want to attack an opponent, I'm going to play a fraud card against them, in this case, tax loophole. If my opponent doesn't have either a Fall Guy or a Flee the Country card to defend my attack, they get one indictment and they hand me over some cold hard cash or any other asset card they have in their hand. Then I get to bank this in my offshore account and they get an indictment. Option four, discarding an unwanted card. In this case, I have no fraud cards to attack my opponent. I've only got one $5 million asset card, which I could bank, and I've got 10 million in liabilities that I could securitize. It's not very exciting. So I'm gonna get rid of one of these cards, see if I get something better. 
bang, Ponzi scheme. That's a lot better. So my next turn, I'm not going to attack, and I'm not going to bank this $5 I'm going to securitize for 30 and I've got two defense cards to protect me during that turn. So likely I can turn this 30 into another $30 million in my offshore account. The fifth option is to audit another player. Once per game, each player can yell audit against one other player as an attack, and if that person's account card total doesn't match their score pad total, they must give their highest asset from their account to their attacker. In this case, you can see I've got 45, 55, 65, 70, 80, 90 million in my offshore account, but I've written down 120, which means if someone audits me, I gotta give them my highest asset card, which is this government bailout. That sucks, and it's because I've been drinking too many of these. I got audited. If you get attacked with a fraud card and you don't have a defense card, you're gonna pay your attacker from your hand, your lowest asset card, which would be this one, and you're gonna pick up one indictment, which you mark on your score pad like so. However, let's say that I didn't have any asset cards in my hand, I have to pay them from my offshore account. In this case, this 15 million that I securitized, I would give to my opponent, and then I would adjust my score total by minus 15 million, which would bring me back down to 25. Does that make sense? So now I've got 25 and I've got one indictment. My opponent gets to bank this $15 million sexual harassment card as an asset in their offshore account. Playing fraud cards. There are six different fraud cards in the deck, enabling a player to attack an opponent and score based on instructions on each card. Regulator, tax loophole, and investigation are straightforward, while insider trading, annual report, and extortion are a bit more complex. In this case, if I attack with tax loophole, and I don't either have a flee the country defense card or a fall guy, I'm going to pick up an indictment and I'm going to give my opponent an asset card. For, for investigation, my defense card is shred evidence. If flee the country card is played, the instructions say you can bank two assets in your offshore account, you discard all your other cards, you lose two turns, and then you can return to the game. That's a cool thing about Flee the Country card. With Insider Trading, if I attack and am successful, I get one asset card from my opponent and one cash or one option card in their hand. In this case, five million stock option card or $10 million cash card. So that's a nice attack card to play because you're getting two asset cards for the price of one. Now the defense against insider trading is investigation. So this is where you could turn the tables by essentially turning your defense into an attack. Now your opponent, now who's the defender, needs to have shred evidence in their hand. Otherwise, boom, they would get an indictment and you would score a successful attack. That's insider trading. Extortion. Extortion is played with one or more liability cards to extort as dollar value from your opponent. In this case, I'm gonna play extortion with 30 million in liabilities, meaning I'm trying to extort 30 million from my opponent. In this case, I can only defend with liability cards of equal to or greater value than, in this case, 30 million. I've only got 15 million in my hand, so now I've got to pay my attacker the difference. In this case, there's 15 million. So they would bank this 15 million in their offshore account. I would pick up a indictment, and that's how extortion works. Annual report can be played against every player at the table. And the defense is being cash flow neutral or positive. 
So I've got to show my hand, in this case, I've got 30 million in liabilities and only 15 in assets. So I'm cash flow negative. This means I pick up an indictment and I have to give my 5 million as an asset to the attacker. That's how annual report works. You want to play the flee the country card as a defense card strategically. It is a defense against regulator tax loophole and when you play it, you can bank two assets and you discard all the rest of your cards and you lose two turns before you can return to the game. So if I've got 30 million and I negate an attack against regulator loot tax loophole, it's totally worth it to play it. However, if I don't have asset cards in my hand, it may make sense to just pick up an indictment and wait to get better asset cards before I play Flee the Country. The Presidential Pardon card is the most powerful card in the deck. It's a defense against all attacks and, if played as a defense card, removes all indictments when played as a defense card. It also can serve as an attack card where you get one asset card from the defender unless they play the other presidential pardon card. Thanks for the full pardon and for making fraud great again. Let's say I just played presidential pardon. These indictments go away and I only need 15 million in assets to get 150 and to win the game. That's how powerful a card it is.